Hey guys, I'm Sham, and this is another Fateless video. I just, uh, just, uh, gotta stretch here a little bit, you know, just my hoodie's feeling really, uh, feeling really nice. Uh, in any case, I am here to talk to you guys about what we are, uh, building at Fateless right now. What makes a great hero, uh, in a hero collector, right? So we're not talking about, like, Star Wars, and we're not talking about Marvel and, and where, and where people, you know, go on this hero's journey. You know, that could be part of, of what makes a great hero. But we're really talking about what makes a great hero collector hero. What is what are the, the pieces that we need to build our teams so we can be the most efficient, we can crush the bosses, and we can have the best team, you know, for PvP or, or whatever it is you want to do. I'm going to start with a little bit of, uh, of history, of kind of my philosophy on what makes, you know, games interesting in the first place. Why do we play these games? Why are we so driven to optimize and to build and to create and to and to level up and to you know uh, get the best equipment and it, i think it all goes back to this guy roger penrose who discovered something called penrose tiling named after him in the 1970s later figured out that 500 years ago you know this was being done in other places but you know don't worry about that but the idea is that you have really simple shapes and those shapes can be combined in any direction to make really interesting patterns that go on infinitely in any direction. And I think that's that's really the core of what of what I think, you know, is interesting about these games. You know, it's simple core mechanics but infinite possibilities. And and that's really what we what we want to be building. So how does a hero really fit into this? How do we build, you know, interesting heroes with cool mechanics, interesting abilities, fun abilities, versatile abilities? What do we need to build do as a company to, to make these things work for you guys? And that's what we'll talk about in a second. At the core of all of this is going to be the stats of the characters, right? So how much HP they have, how hard do they hit, how much defense do they have, what, what kind of hits can they take? This is obviously very core. How fast are they you know, in the turn order? All of these things are crucial to, to a character's you know, success, how strong they are. But it is not the only thing that matters, right? So you could be, you know, you can have, let, let's look, let's use Raid as an example that I'm familiar with. You could have abysmal stats like Armiger, and you could still be a top tier, you know, or mid, mid top tier character. And why? That's because of the synergies and kind of like the unique abilities that he brings to the table. And that's one of the things that, that, you, that you have to look at is that hero collectors are not fighting games. It's not one-on-one. -on -one. It's a team setup. And it's all about the things that that each individual character can bring to a party. So what makes you know an individual character um, great isn't isn't just you know what are their what is like the total value of all their stats added together, you know normalized or whatever. It is what do they bring to the party. So if you're going to bring a character into your team, you know what are the things that you're thinking about? You're thinking about okay, does this fit a piece of the puzzle that I'm missing? Do I need to reduce the other team's defenses? Do I need to bulk up my own my own defenses or my my own offense? Do I have a combo I need to set up? Right? Do I do I need to to target a particular character so I can make sure that they don't you know revive or or, or they or they don't or they don't heal or, you know and 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 make it so that the fight lasts too long for me for my you know burst team um, to be efficient? So you're really thinking about what is the piece of the puzzle that these characters fit. So whenever whenever you're we're designing a character, we have to think, okay, what is the overall spread? What is the whole collection of characters that already exist? And how does this character fit into that kind of, you know, mosaic, that collage of these characters? If it doesn't have a, a place where it fits in, where it's unique, it does something that, that other characters don't do, then, you know, it's not gonna be a good character. Our concept is that we need to be building, have characters, lots of characters rather that are interesting and fun to play and that do fit a piece. Now they're not all, all going to be balanced and exactly the same, but they are going to all fit into a particular place in the game. So each character should feel exciting and interesting to get basically to collect. But as we know, hero collectors are about collecting heroes. Okay. So it is important of course, to have the great stats. It's amazing to have the abilities and the, the synergies with your other characters you know, the being the best at what you at what your character can do, having you a unique ability that no other character has, making you consistent or 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 speeding up 
um, the process of farming or, or, or whatever it is, these things are, are vital. But the other really important part is the way that the character looks and their backstory. We'll talk about that in a second. Heroes need a badass backstory to back up the way that they look. It's so, so important. It, I mean, it doesn't have to be, you know, a big, long uh, three series or three movie series that that tells the whole backstory of their their whole life story. It just needs to really add some some lore to this character so that when you when you go in there and you look at the character you're like wow i really like the details of this book that they've got on their side or they've got this sweet ass staff or, or or whatever it is it's so important that that it's like okay well what is that staff does what does it have to do with the overall lore of the game how does it support you know uh, uh what's happening in the background of the of the story how does it connect connect to other characters these things are really important for people because Again, it's a it's a hero collector. Like I remember playing Warhammer, Warhammer 40k, spending time reading <laughs> reading all the books and learning about the the different factions, Undead Forever, by the way. Um, and 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 that was such a such a crucial thing for me about what made these characters cool. So I, I might I might even set up my army not quite as efficiently as I could because I really liked you know the vampire counts and I really wanted to have like a character that would that looked this particular way. So I would spend my time, you know, building building around that. So that story, that background, that lore is so crucial to making to kind of like rounding out this character. We've got the abilities, we've got the stats, we've got the look, and then we've got the lore. So a couple of characters that I absolutely love and that I think fit uh this this idea of an amazing hero that could, that could fit really well into a game like this. This character Nicol Bolas from Magic: The Gathering, I I, lo- I love this character. So it's it's a it's a giant dragon, okay, gold dragon. Um, I guess it was he became the God Emperor and was stripped of all his powers and and is dead to the multiverse. And only Jace Bellerin knows knows of him, right? So this this idea of like this 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 God Emperor, um, um dragon where we stripped of all his powers, super cool, right? I mean, obviously this he doesn't have a a, a stat line for for a hero collector. Um, as of yet, uh, but he he just kind of embodies this idea of like really cool visuals, really cool backstory. I feel like he's he it's kind of all has all the recipe of of what you would need to kind of make or, or take take a character that exists in this other in other, this other world, turn them into something that could be amazing in, in hero collector. And obviously, you have to get the stats right and the and the uh, and the abilities right, or maybe it's a boss. But in any case. This is like a character that I think would be uh, would be amazing and would fit the bill for an amazing hero. Call out to another one of my favorite franchises, Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy XII's Balthier. What a B.A. What a cool character. Uh, this guy is basically the Final Fantasy version of Han Solo. Um, comes on the scene looking really cool. He's got great lines. I mean, again, this is, this is an RPG where... The story is almost everything, right? The combat system was very cool, and, and I and I love the I love that you could kind of program your your macros for your for for your team. You know, it actually has a, a lot of uh, elements that that kind of uh, modern hero collectors draw from. But Final Fantasy XI's Balthier, another amazing hero, someone that that I I personally think would be uh, is just is just a, a very cool character and uh, you know fits that bill of of, a, of an amazing hero. Something I didn't haven't really called out too much is actually the audio of of you know the, these characters. Sometimes that can really make a big difference. So I'll, I'll call out one of my one of my uh, one of my favorites and one that everyone's going to know is good old Leroy Jenkins. Now I don't know if you can call him a hero or a villain, but uh, you know once you get to Hearthstone and, and they've kind of adapted him, you know, at least he's got his chicken, Leroy Leroy Jenkins. I mean, so iconic that that sound and and sometimes. Um, that's really what's important is is kind of like the combination of all the pieces put together, right? It's it's the 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 idea of this character or this person rather <laughs> who who runs in and kind of messes with with their group uh, with this uh, this courage that maybe wasn't exactly warranted, um, and then and then that that sound effect that is, that just becomes iconic after you hear it over and over again. It's just funny. Um, and and so I think that that can also be a, a big piece of it, right? If you if you look at other games, you know that maybe aren't necessarily in the hero collector genre. You've got uh, Smash Brothers, 
where where everybody has kind of their their taunt. And my favorite taunt to do was with DK, where everyone would go, ooh. <laughs> I, now I've done that on, on screen. It, it can't be undone. So um yeah, do with it what, what you will. But that sound effect is is it's it's just too funny. Or or um or Captain Falcon's uh, show me your moves, show me your moves. I mean these things are 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 super are super important to to what you know, made a great character. Obviously, I love playing those characters because they had great moves, they had cool abilities, they, you know, they were, they had a certain weight, which made them hard to, to, to shoot off the screen, or they were very fast. But it also comes back to, to their, their general, you know, their, their, the character of their character, but also their, their sound effects, their audio, their one-liners, I guess, is also quite important. Maybe the last thing that we'll talk about here is great heroes need great villains. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that a great hero and hero collector always has to be a good guy, right? A good guy. The idea is that there needs to be conflict, okay? So, again, going back to this to this idea of a story and of characters and of the environment and the and the 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 scene that's been set in the story, it's so important for there to, to be this conflict, right? So that could be represented mechanically in affinity, right? You know, red beats red beats green, uh, white beats black, whatever, right? Those things can be uh, can be expressed that way, but from the perspective of, of, of a hero of a character, it's so important that that you that there's kind of like this either expressly you know said or at least implied friction between between characters in the same in the same pool. So I think one of the one of the things that that usually will make people or draw people to to characters, draw people to heroes from just the visual perspective, is that they have that they are are not just very neutral. They're they. They are very much, you know, representative of of the of the good or the evil or the or the chaotic, right? And so that's that's kind of a, another call out to to what you need in these characters. That is it, ladies and gentlemen. That is what makes a great hero and how to and how you know I philosophically think about um, building these characters and designing them. Um, you know a little bit about a periodicity uh, and and you know the the idea of having these small pieces that lead to infinite choices um it's what i what i think of when i think of uh you know making heroes and designing heroes and designing uh you know character sets and not just individual characters so hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight into what we uh, are trying to build uh, and gets you a little bit excited about you know kind of the next steps we'll be taking you through the whole journey of of what it takes to build a game what it takes to make a studio uh and i hope you guys enjoy Thank you guys so much. It's been a pleasure. I'm Sham. This is Fateless. See you soon.